I know it's not like a sexy answer and it's not new technology, but it's something that I can't imagine a business not having control over as they're Google My Business. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Conquer Local Roundtable. My name is Rylan Morris. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Vendassa. And I'm joined today with a colorful cast of characters, Vendassa's executive and leadership team, uh, to discuss everything in the world of SMB SaaS and beyond. More specifically today, we're going to be talking about uh, the ever-changing relationship between local businesses, their customers, and the local experts that are helping SMBs through every step of the way. Um, and for those of you that are new to the show, uh, welcome. Be sure to check out our last two episodes on our YouTube channel, uh, just uh, youtube.com slash Vendasta. And you can join the conversation over online at our community. Uh, that's academy.conquerlocal.com slash community. So uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. First question here. Obviously, 2020 has been a year filled with changes in the world of local business. Uh, my first question to the group here is, how do you think these past few months have impacted or changed the relationship between local businesses and their customers? And maybe, you know, as customers of, of, of local businesses, maybe you guys have some examples that you can kind of pull from yourself too. Maybe some examples to share with the group here. One of the things that I, I was thinking about that everybody's having to deal with now is the, uh, h- how do you deal with the mask situation? Because, uh, you know, you don't want to shame your customers. Uh, that's definite no, no. And some businesses are, are, are struggling with that in that. How do you make your customers feel safe? Your employees feel safe, but you also don't, you know, alienate yourself from your customers. And so I think, you know, people that are, you know, when they're booking appointments, they're making sure people actually talk about this before you show up at their business. And so you understand what that's going to be like. And I've seen a bunch of places like hair salons where they're having to put up signs on the outside. They're having to put up stuff in their meeting invites to let you know what that experience is going to be like. So you don't show up and either feel totally out of place because you, you know, you maybe you over prepped or totally out of place because now you're totally under prepped. So that's something I've seen. I'd love to tag on to that, Dale. I think that's a. I think that's really smart. I, I look at it as that it's created a more of a conversation between customers and business than it's ever happened before. And the ability to communicate with your customers, whether that is to help them understand when and how to schedule or to do a video conference because they're not able to be there or even updating just your hours of operation or where you can park or where curbside is or the, or the process of doing curbside pickup like, are they going to come to your truck? Do you have to go to the car? Where do you park? Like, that is all so new that the communication is becoming one-to-one from major brands to even small businesses. So I think that's been the real trend that I've seen is that there's been a dialogue started between customers and companies that is deeper and more uh, thorough than we've ever seen before. And the obligation on the business to communicate uh, is higher. So finding tools and technologies that help them do that is really driving a change today. Maybe I'll just add on to that too, Gib. I think, I think there's so much of the conversation that isn't even happening either that businesses are having that they don't know that they're having. And that is because as a consumer, so much of my purchase decision, so much more of it now is being made before I actually go to the point of purchase, if it's a physical store or go to the restaurant. I'm making so many more decisions now before I go into the grocery store or go in to the salon or whatever, because when I'm in there, it's in and out. It's like quick transaction gone and done. So this idea of browsing no longer exists or just kind of discovering no longer exists. I do so much more of, of my research and um, I might not even be looking at the business in terms of what I'm about to purchase. I might be looking at other influences like, you know, clothing or or other cues even before I enter that that point of purchase. So I think businesses m- might need to recognize that um, there's other factors that are influencing the, the purchase that they might not be aware of besides the physical conversations or, that they're having. Jackie, that's so right. And the world is changing so fast that like, I mean, in the States, We've got new laws and what phase your state is in like changes the way and who you can shop with. Like, again, that communication is higher than ever before. As shoppers, we have to research before we can go because we don't know whether we can go into the store or not, right? Yeah, totally. Well, and I I think we'd also point out that, uh, you know, the relationship between customers and businesses is also interesting because people's lives have fundamentally changed. 
And so there's new relationship opportunities. So, you know, you know essentially people are at that phase where, you, you know, historically marketing companies try to hit you when you get married, when you get divorced or when you have babies because your life changed and there's new relationship opportunities. Well, COVID is now one of those opportunities. And so these businesses like, hey, all the, you know, I wasn't interested in a whole bunch of, you know, bunker full of cans of food. Well, I'm all of a sudden in that market. And now if that's what you sell, we're in a new relationship. Look at RVs that like, it's a category that's blowing up because everyone's like, I want to go on vacation, but I don't want to stay in somebody else's bed. Well, like that's a new relationship too. So it's not even just the old ones. It's like, Hey, who are your new customers? Because you sell stuff that different people want. Yeah. So rewinding it a little bit to what you were saying there earlier, Jackie, just around even th that that relationship and doing doing the research before you're buying. Um, you know, this is not anything new, especially on the sales side of things. You know, people have been doing their research online over the past few years. We know this very clearly at Vendasta um, before they go into a car dealership and buy, before they go into a grocery store, as you mentioned, right? Um, I wonder, maybe Neil, you can touch on this a little bit. Um, has that sales maybe relationship changed at all between a salesperson and their customer for a local business? I think the way that uh, that we communicate with them has definitely changed. Um, and I think it's changed for a couple of reasons. And I think definitely for the better. Um, I think it's it's put a real push on utilizing this type of technology, some sort of screen sharing technology. And and uh, and understanding that uh, it's it's more problematic now for us to actually show up and have a face-to-face -face sales call, uh, and that we can be far more effective through these types of technologies. Um, I think the uh, responses vary radically, and I and I, I see I'm listening to you guys talk about uh, the research you do on shopping, and before you go buy something, you look it up and whatnot. And I find the um, there's massive opportunities because the experience with certain places is very good and the experience with others is, is still terrible. So um, there's a massive opportunity there to, uh, to take those businesses accustomed to having people walk in and walk through their, you know, retail space or showroom or whatnot and, uh, and make their, their point of purchase decision while they're there. Um, now they're, they're looking to see, you know, who's got what and they want to either get it curbside delivered or, or delivered to their house or, at, you know, worst case scenario, pop in and pop out and buy it. Um, it. It's funny. I just went through this last weekend where I needed to buy a few things for, you know, my new place in Saskatoon. And, and I was exactly that. I, I, I found certain retailers were awful and I just abandoned, you know, those right off the bat. And then the ones that had a decent experience and I could, could swing by and, and, and get curbside delivery, that was great. But, but there's a huge opportunity there. For sure. I don't know about you guys too. I'll just jump in. Sorry, Neil. That um, I found in my my consumer buying journey, I'll go almost to the point of purchase. I'll go uh, like so. For example, let's let's say you're buying new plate, new things for your place. I'll pick out exactly what I'm about to buy on the website, and then that becomes my hit list, and then I'm in and out. So even if I don't have the patience to wait for delivery. I'm still going through that e-commerce journey until the very last step. Um, I'm still deciding everything I want um, because I have to. I don't have the time to dawdle or I don't have, you know, the risk tolerance to be in the store for very much longer. So I think businesses have to recognize that, um, you know, there's so much of that shopping that exists on the website or on their Instagram account or on their Facebook or wherever customers are looking for those things, even if it's not dropping off the bottom of the funnel. And it's really important to pay attention to. I'm curious why you wouldn't use um, a, a curbside scenario where you, you, you've gone all that way. You've picked out exactly what you want. You just click on it, buy it, and then you show up and they throw it in your car. Um, sometimes I have problems with times and tardiness. And so sometimes I can't commit to a window. It's like, I don't know when my kid's going to wake up. And so I'll, I'll often, I do this for grocery delivery a lot. I'll get everything queued up. But I don't know if I can make that window that I've committed to. So it'll just become my shopping list, you know, or it'll just become. So in a perfect world, if I had all my ducks in a row, I, I absolutely would. But it's just those odd times where I, I need to do the thing, which is the upfront research, even if I'm not converting. One of the things I found that's long been near and dear to Vendasta's heart is that reviews are more important than ever. 
right? I mean, we're making, we don't want to spend a lot of time in the store because of a variety of different reasons or even which store, but, and, and oftentimes we're making new buying decisions from places that we've never been. And, uh, and I find myself relying on reviews more than ever and looking for businesses that have like engaged with reviews because I know they're in business, that they're active, that they're, they usually give me some piece of information about how that, you know, that old review isn't relevant now because the world has changed. And, uh, you know, it really does impact my buying decisions so much. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. I, I, it, it's the first thing I look at. I won't buy anything unless there's been a few good reviews on it. And if there's a bad review on it, that's like, that's a non-starter right there. I kind of like the odd bad review, to be honest. Have you also found that like ever since COVID and you start looking at online reviews, you realize how many idiots there are in the world because like you read people's reviews and it's, and it's like, yeah, like I bought that cooler and all it took was like my, my, I drove over and it broke. I can't believe it. And you're like, I can't believe that's a one-star review. Who drives over coolers? <laughs> but that's why I like the bad reviews. It's like there's always crazies. There are always crazies. And I want to see what the response of the business is or, or I want to bet that it's real a little bit, you know. So the odd, you, the odd negative review shows me that it's real. But it, if it's if it's a crazy leaving the review, I'm like, okay, well then this is legit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, check. they're not they're not filtering their reviews. There was there was a review for I think it was Pizza Hut, where the guy said I ordered this pizza and it came and it was completely blank. There was no sauce. There was no cheese. There was no nothing. And um, and then Pizza Hut reaches out and says, we're so sorry. We'd like to reach out to you privately and fix this situation and blah, 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 blah. And then he posted again. He goes, I'm sorry. I, I was so high. I had no idea. I opened the, the pizza up upside down. So there, there's your crazy <laughs> review, right? No, <laughs> no. He used some other explicit, uh, explicit but, that, but it was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was so high. I just, I had no idea it was upside down. <laughs> so no crazy. sauce, no cheese. <laughs> At least they try to make it right, right? <laughs> I think to coming back to some of the stuff, uh, Rylan, you were talking about with the relationship between businesses and customers, the dialogue has changed too, right? So the, the type of conversation is like we've all been through a crash course on uh, understanding service delivery in a different way. When you come up against the prospects um, at the cash register, we're thinking about that transaction differently. And to Neil's point, absolutely, there's so much more conversation happening and a deeper conversation with reviews and ratings that really didn't seem to happen as much before. So not only are more people using it, but they're going deeper and being more contextual. I know uh, curbside pickup is something that I think uh, is going to be a big question moving forward if who keeps it because it's a different way of service delivery. And for many people, um, it's a, a really nice surprise and it's a convenience that wasn't offered before e-commerce that wasn't offered before that now is offered before because of necessity is being embraced uh, by many people and that there's some really good um, different ways of working um, between consumers and businesses. I think we're also going to see in the coming months as this uh, starts to take hold, we have this idea of a digital customer experience. That's really what this is at the end of the day. So businesses have to embrace having this digital customer experience. So now we put it back in the hands of how are we going to serve our customers in this new digital world. And by letting the customer give us the feedback of what's working and what's not, I don't think there's been a lot of that. I think there's people just saying, I'm going to throw a bunch of shit at the wall and hopefully digitally this thing's going to work. And now we're starting to get that feedback from customers saying, yeah, we don't really like that experience. Uh, maybe try it this way. And we're getting that feedback loop starting to happen. And we're, there's some iterations happening where businesses are saying, well, I tried digital. My customers are saying it's 70% of the way there. And now I want to make these changes. And by focusing more on that experience of the customer, that's a piece that we're not hearing yet because it's so new. So as the customer starts to weigh in and by putting online reviews and saying, yeah, your curbside pickup didn't work for me or it worked great, then we'll start to see the evolution of that experience in the months and, and uh, even in the years to come. You know, that's a really good point, George. I wonder if businesses are taking the time to ask that question. So it's one step further. It's, it's not necessarily soliciting a review or feedback on the service or product they deliver. It's how was your experience in an effort to make that experience better? Are we taking time to actually refine it and iterate and make sure that um, 
you know, we can always get better tomorrow. We can always get better. Are we taking time to listen? And, and I have found that that's the piece where people are still reacting from a point of uh, fear and anxiety in their business where they're like, we need to do something. We read a blog. It said we should do some digital stuff. Let's get an e-commerce website. And it's not with the lens of, is that what the customer wanted? Because you could be a barber and produce this beautiful e-commerce website to buy a hair pomade. But really what I want for my barber is to be able to book an appointment. Yeah, I, that's not my first thing is can I just book an appointment online? So I think that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of trial and error happening right now. And there is that anxiety and fear that is driving it. So there is a catalyst, but it's not taking the customer's feedback into that loop. We're starting to see some of that feedback now. And I think the evolution will look different as we move forward. George, I love that point about how they've got to get to e-commerce and even what that means with that e-commerce experience. I think it's an incredible opportunity for partners and trusted friends and family members and people that they've worked with that have some digital experience to really help these SMBs go through this evolution time. It's a, it's a hard time to learn this new software and to learn these new things. There are people out there though that are really good at handling these things and getting technology in their hands uh, and finding trusted advisors, I think, is what it's really all about for these SMBs to evolve during this time. They shouldn't have to take it on all themselves. So on that topic, Gib, of technology and how technology has really arisen to be the forefront for local businesses in 2020, um, I wonder if we could maybe do a little bit of a roundtable here, go around the horn and just see if there's like one tool or one piece of technology that's really been proven as indispensable for local businesses, uh, especially over the past six months or so. Um, is there something that's really kind of risen to the occasion as just like the tool that all local businesses need? You know, if I were to go first on that, Ryan, I would have to say, and this is is rough, but a, a Google My Business listing. I mean, that tool, there's so many times that my search journey starts, whether it's with a map or with a driving direction or if their hours are open, that, that piece of technology gives such good two-way communication. Uh, and it's it's free to use in a lot of cases uh and it's available that that you know if my hours are changing because of covid or if the, my way that i'm taking payments has changed or curbside pickup or like all of that gets communicated through that so i, I know it's not like a sexy answer and it's not new technology but it's something that i can't imagine a business not having control over as their google my business listing but i am a listings guy from way back <laughs> I would agree with you, Gib. I would totally agree with you. You go looking for a business, and if they don't have a GMB nicely filled out, you, you, you quickly move on. And if they, if they do, it's, it's got all the information you need. Rylan, I'd, I'd add on to that. And I think that we're seeing a lot of businesses that do have a GMB, but then the next step in that is, uh, you know, let's say you're a service oriented bit, like you offer services, things like scheduling. So like I need to be able to book online for an appointment if you're a service business. And if you're a product business, I better be able to buy online. Because if I see two Google My Business listings and one of them has a website that's ready for me to actually buy and one isn't, I know who got my business regardless of where they rank. Yeah, I was just going to add to Dale's, I was going to say scheduling, because I think so much of, um, you know, in, the, in this age that we're in, so much of risk and fear has to do with managing capacity and flow. And I think scheduling allows for, for businesses to also make sure that they're keeping their, you know, customers safe while also keeping in business and they're filling up and, and whatnot. So as a consumer and from a business standpoint, scheduling allows me to make sure that I've got a flow in a safe way for my customers. I'd love to say something different, but I'm not, but I'm maybe on a different view of it. So Google My Business, what I've noticed with that in particular too, is it's also been very powerful with the storytelling, the storytelling of, yes, we're open. Um, the amount of uh, businesses I've spoken to where there's been five-star reviews that they've never responded to, they've never you know, thanked their customers. Community and storytelling is a big part when you can't, be physically with someone and there was a lot of missed stories out there and it's just super important to make sure the stories aren't missed especially to Jackie's point when so much of that decision is being done offline um, precisely so uh, for me it's Google my business still as a, as a suite um, definitely 
So kind of on that same point too there, um, around technology and the, the change in technology for local, um, we touched on this a little bit earlier, I forget who brought it up, but um, this idea around uh, maybe educating customers on how to, what's the new normal? How do I interact with businesses now? What's what's the new way? Like, you know, for example, my uncle, he owns a comic book store in Saskatoon here. And uh, we helped him get online and transact on, online. Uh, we, we helped him with his website. We, we built a beautiful new e-commerce store for his customers to, you know, hopefully buy products and services from him. Uh, but his biggest challenge right now is training his customers. Hey, you can go online now. You can buy online now. You can go to my website. Um, remember my website before? If you went to amazingstoriescomics.com before, remember what it looked like before? It looks nothing like that anymore. And it's actually usable now. It's not some old flash animation that had nothing, that didn't even work on a mobile device, right? So my question to the team here is, uh, is there a chance for local businesses to educate customers on what this new normal looks like. Maybe there's a little bit of a technology gap with local businesses and their customers right now. Um, so again, like how do I get my customers to know that they can buy things from me online or book appointments from me online? And it's not that difficult, it's not that hard. I have some very strong opinions held on this. It again is about telling the customer that you have a new and improved experience for them that is in you know with their best interests in mind so we made this change because we want to serve you as the customer and it's not about the technology the technology is the thing that's going to facilitate the new experience and i think that a lot of people right now are getting caught up in technology and i need this widget and i need this tool where we need to put it back on the customer We've heard from you that you would like to conduct business with us in a different way. We now have this digital experience where it has your best interests in mind and then to give them examples of how they might be able to interact with you. So again, it's putting it back in the hands of the customer that it's all about you and being very customer focused on that level of education and then listening to them because they might tell you that that's not what they wanted and then you've got to iterate and, and change with that and not get caught up in the fact that we don't have Flash anymore on our website because they actually didn't care about that in the first place. What they cared about was the fact that there was an experience by walking in the store and now we've changed that because the world has changed. I think just to add to that too, in any, like in any pandemic or situation like this, um, lack of communication is a killer, right? So having to force your business to actually tell the story, you need to tell the story again and again on why your customers uh, should be listening to you because um, there's a lot of noise going on. And w when there's moments like this, people turn to brands they trust. And if you're not telling them why they should trust you, then uh, you're going to miss out and you'll become invisible in, in amongst everything. The, the, the tool that I think is the technology that they have at their fingertips for communication and talking to their customers uh, at this time, I think it's all about social. I think if you've taken the time to build an audience, uh, if you've taken time to make connections with your customers, uh, I know personally, I've read, you know, many stories on Facebook about things that are going on, that there's a, a business that I know here in the Chicagoland area that for years did event space, and they built their business around helping to, pro to provide booths at events. Well, that business went from millions of dollars a month to zero, right, overnight. So what did they do? They were good at construction, so they started to build PPE. So they started to build masks, and they started to build dividers, and they started to do those types of things, right? Really innovative way to think about what's going on in the market. But to get that out, they had to communicate it, right? And I'm friends with them on Facebook, and I saw their story come to life. And since then, you know, we've tried to push business their way or tried to help make sure that other businesses that are going through this evolution know that they've changed their business model. So I think investing in a social presence and being your authentic self on that social, uh, making sure that there's good content that talks about what's going on in your business, whether it's a new website that somebody can experience and why you went through it, is an incredible way to drive engagement and to build those relationships with your customers. So I always think that at times like this, having an, a, a, a great audience built of followers and friends or people that like your stuff, create that viral effect of social is really important. Well, and I think Rylan, at this point, for a lot of these people, you've almost started a new business and it's maybe hard to look back on it, but when you first started your business, 
you weren't about efficiency. You were about a lot of hard work. It was about the, you know, the owner being out there on the floor, meeting the customers and doing these things. And so I think that right now we're at a time where, you know, we're not about efficiency. We're about a lot of effort at a very low efficiency to figure out what actually does work. And then what's going to happen is you're going to start to figure that out. And then you're going to choose the technologies and things that support that. But in the end, this isn't a choose something off the shelf and be done. This is time to put some sweat equity in and figure out what your customers need. And the technology can support you in that. But there's no substitute for that effort. I like that a lot. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, let's let's take it back a little bit to um, think a little bit about to our the types of customers that Vendasta deals with. So for those that don't know, uh, Vendasta uh, has a reseller model. We work with uh, we, we call them trusted local experts all over the place, all over the world. Um, so we talked a little bit about the relationship between a local business and their customers. Um, but I wonder if there's been any sort of big change in the relationship between the local business and that trusted local expert that they're, they're dealing with on a regular basis. How has that perhaps evolved over the past year? I see that there's a balance of the sense of urgency. I think, you know, George was talking about not necessarily rushing in. Uh, but having a conversation about what are the experiences, um, that's definitely coming up. The conversations around what are you hoping to achieve? Like it sounds cliche and every sales conversation um, should cover that, but it goes to a deeper level at the moment and it goes to uh, a transitional level as well. So I see that being probably one of the, the big changes um, that have happened. This this actually goes much, much deeper because I think a lot of these local businesses now are having to actually rethink their business model. You know, if you're a, a, a restaurant, you needed to have your restaurant packed three nights of the week in order to, 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 to make a go of it. And now they have to rethink their model. And, uh, you know, if you are a, a retail place, you, you, you might need a, a large piece of retail space to hold all of your your showroom and all your goods and and. and now you don't really need that. You need a place to hold inventory and, and, a, and, a, and a website that, uh, that can perform e-commerce. So I think a lot of them are going back and looking and, and, and reevaluating their, their actual business model and to see how, how they can adjust it to make sense. And this is where, you know, that trusted advisor can help them uh, help uh, help them navigate these, you know, uncharted waters for a lot of these businesses. I think, you know, so much of it is education as well. It's not just about bringing the tools and technology. It's it's about bringing how other successful businesses have used those tools and technologies to serve their customers in different ways. So it's it's really about um, the advice, not just product dumping or, you know, giving them a bunch of tools off the shelf. Nobody has this figured out yet. We're all trying to figure this out. So the more um, trusted experts can be, not just experts but trusted to be looking beyond um, what's in front of them is really important as well yeah i, I guess uh, on that topic too jackie um we talked again about what technology changes or what is like that 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 one indispensable tool for a local business in communicating with their customers i wonder if there's um you know other than maybe Vendasta, if there is a piece of technology that um, trusted experts around the world are finding as you know indispensable when they're dealing with their customers, their local business customers, and helping them get it, getting set up online, and maybe even helping them out with their social media, and what you'd mentioned there, Neil, too, managing their inventory, and maybe changing how even how their POS system works a little bit too. Um, you know, we we're gone past the days of having the opportunity to even really approach a local business and do this right in the store with them. Um, I wonder if there is sort of like, uh, you know, a shift in technology in what trusted experts are using to facilitate uh, that kind of transaction. You know, I think the obvious answer is if you can't be there in person to walk a business through these things, the very next best thing is this, it's screen share. It's looking each other in the eyes and um, not losing that human element that relationships and trust are built on. Um, and sometimes that's, you know, a learning curve, especially for sales teams that don't sell on screen share or by video. Um, it takes a little bit of adjustment. You know, you're always fixing your hair and making sure you're counting, but it's, it's just a human on the other side of this. And that's what screen share allows us to do is um, keep that human element in all these conversations and relationships. I think that the other piece to to go with that is the screen share is great, but don't forget that there's that whole arrangement of the meeting. You need some way to actually book that meeting 
because you know you have to it's not like you can just walk up into the store and have a meeting it's like you actually have to arrange what is the tool we're going to meet with when are we going to meet how do we do that so that's another piece and you know people don't think about that side sometimes just to echo that like the booking piece the efficiency that's gained with good booking systems and being able to just slot straight into a calendar um, and have both parties um, not have to worry about travel has created more opportunity for more frequent and more constructive sessions, especially between agencies and, and anyone being that trusted expert to the, to the business. One of the difficulties in the past was always getting time with the business. And that's sort of become a lot easier too. Um, with these web-based booking systems. Uh, on the other side, I don't know if it's new technology, but email and really smart email campaigns are still proven to be effective, right? If you can, it, it goes to the point that we were talking about earlier that there's this education that you need to do nowadays in order to bring people up to speed. And, and there's really not many more effective tools than a, a good marketing automation drip campaign to educate people. And they're still getting read, they're still getting opened, and actually more so because many of these businesses don't have as much foot traffic going on, so they're not dealing with customers face-to-face, -face. they're actually lined up to their inbox. And they are starting to learn that their inbox is their operating system, so it's your chance to get in front of them now, where in the past, you know, maybe they were out on the floor having those conversations. And today they're looking and they're engaging with their customers that way. And they're looking to learn in a different way. I mean, we're seeing tremendous growth in things where people are being able to self-teach and self-learn. And you as a trusted partner should communicate via email, uh, but really be thoughtful on your content, right? Spam never works, right? But great content and a great email campaign is an amazing way to do things. Good stuff, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, e even thinking, um, we've thought a little bit about, you know, the past six months and the change in that relationship between the customer and their their lo the local business they're dealing with and local business and the trusted local expert that they're dealing with um, on a technology standpoint, uh, some of the evolutions that have happened there. But I, I wonder if there's anything that you've got on your radar as far as new advancements in technology, like thinking maybe a year from now, what's going to be the, the next Zoom? What's going to be the next big thing that really pops off? We touched on a few things here around appointment scheduling, email even, really like coming back to the idea of just some of the fundamentals of communication. But is there anything out there that that you have your eye set on as something that's really going to be transformative as we, we ease into this new normal? I do. I think that, Rylan, all the stuff we're talking about it, this is a marketing uh, podcast, so I might as well use some marketing terms here. Like, this is all top of funnel. So we're talking about how do you get that meeting? How do you book that appointment? But th I mean, that's great. Now, once you actually get there, what's the next part? So I think all the software that we're thinking about right now is all about the, oh my, like it's for the, the people. It's like, how do I get an online store? And for the, the salespeople, it's like, how do I get a meeting? But the question is, is like what we're finding when we talk about the real experience is, is you get into the store and you discover that, oh, like I can't do curbside pickup. It's that, that's lower in the funnel. It's like, I've already sold you. Now what do I do? And so I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for the, okay, we had a meeting. Now how do you fulfill and how do you deliver? And that's where, I mean, the panic at first is that is that top, but then we're going to be moving down in the funnel at the software. Yeah, I agree. I think too, like there's a being a big adoption boom, right? So people have adopted more due to necessity. Uh, I don't think attribution is going to be solved because there's still a messy path to purchase, which will be messy because there's always more options. But pipeline management and advances in understanding more of your customer base because more are touching into digital and you're capturing more, I think will be a really interesting uh, evolution. Uh, and it's really just fueled by more people using digital really quickly more often as part of every purchase process. Rylan, I'd talk about two on the list that I've been looking at. One is that I think you can make a change right now and get up to speed, and then one's a little further out. But the first would be mobile payments. I mean, I think if you haven't updated your POS system and your mobile payment system yet, like if you're not able to take Apple Pay or if you haven't upgraded your ability to take credit cards, right, I, I think you're going to be uh, behind the times right now. And there's a lot of greatness that comes with, you know, merchant services that you can add to it. Uh, and then the second is that I'm really interested to see how AR, VR, virtual reality, and augmented reality start to come to life in this remote work, in this remote areas. I, I don't know. I think that's probably further out. But, you know, 
Facebook is, and Oculus have been doing a ton of work on this for a lot of years, and they've really focused on the gaming area. But I think that the change that's happening in the world where we don't want to be physically close, but we want to re replicate some of those experiences, virtual reality has a chance to do some of that. And I think that we're all running into a little Zoom fatigue of the way it looks and acts and feels, and it's going to open our reason to to invest in other hardware or to create a different experience that's a little unique or change of pace as we all work remotely. So uh, you're reading some things coming out about remote work environments that are virtual rooms now where they've all got their headsets on and it feels like you're working on a whiteboard in the same room. Uh, so I think that there's some interesting things that'll come there. It's further out, right? That's, that's, that's still years away, but uh, those would be some things I'm looking at. Yeah, it's really interesting you bring that up, Gib. Uh, I remember uh, George, actually, maybe you can comment on this. I think he's a little distracted at the moment, which is fine. But uh, I remember him demoing some really cool software with us a while back where we uh, all had like our, it was almost like Second Life. Like we all had our own little avatars and we were in a virtual meeting room. I forget exactly what it was called, George, but. Oh, um, Verbella. Verbella, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why, like, we, we should pull the trigger on that. It, it, was, it was pretty great. I got to wear a little cowboy hat. Well, and the thing I like about it is it's it's virtual reality. So we are on a meeting like this, and we're like, why don't we go out by the ocean and continue our conversation? And then your avatars all are transported to the ocean, and you get they the They fly over. It's so <laughs> cool. So there's a lot. There's I think that VR is going to be a thing uh, as we move forward. We're living in this environment. Uh, the other thing that I, I've noticed in the last little while is I was on a Zoom call the other day where people have mandated green screens and mandated backgrounds so that it's matching the brand. So there's organizations that are really stepping things up to make this experience even better. I think, too, you know, e-commerce has just exploded. That's, you know, if you read any tech news or news in general, that's a, a no-brainer. But I, I think to Michael's point earlier and Dale's, um, you know, just because adoption doesn't mean perfection. It's like there's still a long way to go. And I think businesses right now are patching together a whole bunch of different tools in order to try to create a seamless customer journey that doesn't really have great attribution and it's really clunky. And so I think the next wave of this is going to be the integration in a non-technical way of plug and play, knowing that every business has a different customer experience. So it's not going to be a one size fits all. So integration would be one, and then the automation processes on top of that integration, sort of the RPA, if this, then that, because I think, you know, businesses, as like Dale said, you know, the, the founders right now are hustling and they're creating what that new business model looks like. But at some point when people take a breath and understand, okay, I think we've got it. Now we need to create efficiencies in order to be kind of around in the long run. That's going to be sort of the next wave of, of tech. Yeah, it's you got to prove it works and then you make it efficient. And I think sometimes you got to be careful you don't make it efficient before you know it actually works because uh, I, I forget who the quote is, but it's like the first focus is not how fast you climb the ladder, it's that you put the ladder on the right building. Love that. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. You know, going back to the initial question here of like, what what is the future look like for technology for local and that relationship between a local business and their customers and, and the trusted local expert that they're dealing with? Um, you know, let's maybe assume that this COVID-19 thing, it maybe a year from now, it's it's done, right? Like maybe maybe the pandemic's over, everyone's coming out of their, their, their hiding holes and uh, they're ready to interact with the rest of the world. Is there any technology? And again, this might be a bit of a rhetorical question. Is there any technology that um, might be a trend through all this. It might just be something that is, it's hot now because remote is really important and working remotely is really important and dealing remotely with local business is really important. And it won't be important a year from now if it, all that's said and done. Or is it all here to stay? You know, Rylan, to answer that question, I think we have to look as a society at what's not going back to normal. And um, you know, as consumers shopping at businesses or coworkers in the new way of work, um, there are things that we've adopted that we've all discovered, like, this is okay. This is all okay. And it's actually better in some ways. And so I think we just have to look at what technology allows for the new way um, that we're going to want to work and live. And those are going to be the ones that stick around. I think there were certain things that, that came out of this that that taught us lessons like the fact that people can work effectively remotely kind of enhances the whole work-life balance uh the fact that 
um, people can shop if, if you if you like curbside to pick up, which which I think is the greatest thing going. Um, it, it's a, it's a great way to to uh, to enhance your experience. I pull up, they throw it in my car, I I go. It 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 allows me to do things much much faster. So there's certain pieces that I think you know might not have come out of uh, the, the normal progression, but COVID sort of uh, pushed them out out the, the pipe a whole lot faster. And I think so. Th- those technologies will stick around. I, I'm I'm curious to see if uh, if a, a business model can be created that can you know mirror Uber uh, for people delivery, but for product delivery, where they can deliver. You know, I can buy something uh, from a store, and it can be delivered an hour later at a very reasonable rate. Um, and I, I'm curious to see if some sort of technology like that will emerge, or somebody will come up with a model that can actually work. Because right now it, it it doesn't. Rylan, I'm getting old, so I hope TikTok goes away. I'm just I can't keep up with TikTok. I don't want another oh, social I love network. TikTok. I, 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 I've I've had enough TikTok uh, uh, in my life, so I'm hopeful that that goes away. I kind of think Rylan that uh, you know we've opened a Pandora's box and you can't put it back. There's going to be things that have changed, regardless of what changes about like COVID, but like customers have experienced new things that they hadn't before. And we don't have an ability for them to unsee the world where I don't have to go into a store. I could just pick something up. We don't have to let them unsee the idea that I can literally book time at a restaurant instead of having to show up at the door. So there's experiences that people are getting right now that they are not going to be okay putting back no matter how the world changes. So I mean, we're going to see some of that stay. Some of the awkward maybe goes away, but some of the awesome is going to be an expectation. Love that. Mic drop. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, that might be a great place to, to end things off, guys. Um, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate the chat today. Uh, any last minute thoughts on this whole idea of relationships? Um, you know, the change in relationship between, again, a local business, their trusted local expert and the customers they serve. Um, going forward to any any last minute sound bites we can can leave our our listeners with like i'm disappointed with this mic mount now because i just realized i can't even drop it when george asks me to i so my uh my one item is it it, uh renews my belief in resilience the, the resiliency of of us as a society as business owners yeah there's been casualties and that's not a good thing but I, you know, I was on a call today with someone who was talking about Darwinism and and the people who really want to win and and want to do the work and want to put in the hard work and and the rigor are the ones that are going to win out of this. And I think at the end of the day, we all win as consumers and, and customers because of a better experience. So it, it's it's kind of cool to see the stories of individuals or organizations that made uh, you know turned on a dime. And, and made the change and put in the hard work and weren't afraid to to tackle the crisis and and to figure out a way to make it work and and it's uh it's not even a cliche it, it it's you know human spirit and it's uh, the ability to to uh to figure it out and uh, it's kind of renewed my uh enthusiasm around that yeah i would end on i, I think it's the the core things that have always made local businesses great which is how are you building community and can you use social and things to do that? How are commu- are you communicating? And maybe you can't do it the same way you used to, but you still need to communicate. And, and then how do you build those relationships with people uh, and create amazing experiences for them uh, in however they need to shop or learn about your business? I, I like to think of this as like a time like Caleb talks about in his book, Anti-Fragile. And it's all about small business is actually the anti-fragile business. It's a business that like random and these sort of things like COVID, um, they're the businesses actually do better sometimes when these sort of random variations happen. It's hard sometimes on big established groups when like their predictions of the future, you know, don't turn out the way they'd hoped, but small business is less about projections and more about reacting. And so, you know, introducing like crazy stuff like this is often what small business really thrives on. And so you're going to find that as much as it is difficult, there's going to be people that emerge as winners out of this. And that's likely going to be the entrepreneurs that have the true connection with their customer. Great stuff. Good optimism guys. Looking forward to the future here. Um, 
Thank you so much for joining us today, today's Conquer Local Roundtable. Um, once again, if you guys are interested in joining the conversation, if you're listening right now and uh, want more of this great content, join us online at academy.conquerlocal.com slash community or community.conquerlocal.com. Uh, I'm Rylan. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, everyone.